Yo, what is up everyone? I hope everyone's having an amazing day. My name is Matthew Nixon and welcome to my channel, Matt Nixon Visuals. Today, we're gonna be teaching you guys how to shoot all manual on your DSLR or mirrorless camera. And we've got one of our beginners here with us, Matt Bala. So what we're gonna be doing is teaching you guys how to shoot, teaching him how to shoot manual, and then using our model, we're actually gonna get him to test it out. What he learns, I'm gonna make sure I teach him good enough, teach you guys good enough, and that's what I wanted to say, is I suggest, right after watching this video, go and shoot right away, go and practice the best way of learning is just by practicing you can know the basics you can know everything but unless you go and do you're never gonna get better before we actually get started on going into the basics I just really quickly wanted to say whatever you're shooting on really does not matter I'm shooting on a Sony a7r2 but I started out on a Sony t3i Matt, what are you using 6d mark II. when it comes down to the actual photo having a good photo your camera does not matter so get that out of your head if you have a hundred dollar camera five thousand dollar camera five hundred dollar camera doesn't matter There's three things we're gonna be going over in this video and that's the three things that make up your exposure of your photo it's gonna be ISO your shutter speed and your aperture for this tutorial I'm not gonna really be talking about all the scientific things that ISO shutter speed and aperture do but more or less just what the basic things they do of how they change your photo so that you have a basic understanding and when you're in a different environment let's say somewhere where it's dark or somewhere where it's very bright you know how to change your camera setting to adapt and get the photo that you actually Want. Let's get started with the first thing that's gonna be ISO make sure you're listening up too because we're teaching you and these guys yep. The easiest way that I can explain ISO is it adds light to your photo But at the same time that it's adding like fake light. It's also adding grain to your photo So first thing I always do is set my ISO to 100 and then if I have to go up I will go up based on my other setting a lot of cameras are different my camera I know I can go up to about 2500 ISO and there's really not much grain but once I start hitting 3,000 4,000 it's gonna add grain to my photo for example on a nice bright sunny day which is not really today I would definitely be keeping my ISO at 100 based on my other settings but a day like today I know I'm probably gonna be shooting at around 200 250 just so that I can keep my other settings at what I'm gonna need to keep them at also kind of the opposite the more higher you go in ISO more grain the lower you are, the sharper your photo is going to be. You always want to be at a low ISO. You don't want to go too high, but start to learn and try to understand what your camera's limits are. Go out at night, try taking some photos at night. Go out during the day, try taking photos at day. S compare your different ISOs, check them out. Now, moving on to shutter speed. Shutter speed, basic, easiest way I can put it is how much light is getting let into your exposure and how long that exposure is staying open for. So how long it's taking the photo for. If I'm at a really fast shutter speed, it's going to take the photo really, really quick. If I'm at a lower shutter speed, it's going to hold the exposure. If you have movement in your photo, that movement isn't gonna get captured in sharp photo. Something else I definitely 100% need to mention, just kind of like ISO, when you start going down in shutter speed, so if I'm at a 50 shutter speed, my photo is gonna be very bright. If I start going up in shutter speed, it's gonna make my photo darker. ISO, shutter speed, and aperture all affect how bright your photo is gonna be, but also affect something else. So next, let's talk about your f-stop. Every single lens has a different f-stop. My lens goes down to 1.8. If you're using a kit lens, which is like the basic lens that your camera will come with, it's probably only uh, f4 to f22 or something like that. So your f-stop is pretty much, if you have a lower f-stop, your background is going to be really blurry. If you have a high f-stop, your background is going to be very in focus. Um, so let's say if I'm doing a landscape photo, I definitely want to have a very high f-stop like f20, f16, f22 maybe even, because I want to capture everything in the photo and I want to get everything in focus. If I wanted to, let's say, take a portrait of Matt right here, or let's say, let's say I just wanted to take a photo of his eye, I would want to lower down my f-stop down to 1.8 so that it's just focusing on a small amount. I'd have to be very close to him. Boom. Boom. 1.8 looks nice. Oh, it does. Something else I kind of forgot to mention that Matt just brought up was the manual and autofocus and the difference of those. Try both of them. I always shoot autofocus at first, depending on your camera, every camera has different autofocus systems. My suggestion is start shooting on auto and then try manual, but it's always based on the situation that you're in. I shoot auto if I can, but if I have to move over to manual for a specific focus point or, you know, just something else, then I move over to manual. It's kind of up to you. Try both of them and play around with it. Manual focus can be annoying sometimes if you're taking photos quickly and you need to always be changing the focus point, then don't use manual, but it can be very beneficial too. Now that doesn't mean, that doesn't mean switch this. That means you switch the actual yeah. autofocus and manual focus on your lens. Or if you're like me and you don't shoot Canon, then your autofocus is gonna be built into your camera. So learn that on your camera, look up your camera, 
how to do autofocus, but yeah. Now, something else I wanted to mention is on almost every single camera, there's gonna be an exposure meter and also a histogram. That's something that you really wanna pay attention to when you're shooting on a manual mode and changing your ISO, your shutter speed, and your f-stop. It's gonna tell you, based on your camera's reading, if your exposure is off or over or perfect. And you always wanna try and get it perfect and have it at, you know, zero. My exposure reading is right here on my camera. So as you can see right now, mine's at plus three, so I know that my my photo is overexposed, so I need to change it, change something, and make it not overexposed. Now it's at zero, and also as you can see there on my histogram, it's a flat bar. You don't want to have something, let's say, like this on your histogram where the highlights are just spiked right up, and that's reading plus two. Even something like here, 1.3, your exposure is gonna be way too high. You have your highlights peaking way up. You can even see here on my camera, it's just way too bright. So that's something you also wanna look at on your camera is your exposure reading. Always try and keep it at zero. After you start to learn how it works, you're gonna understand that you don't always have to keep it at zero. It's always based on the photo that you want, but this is a way better and easier way to understand how your photo is gonna turn out when you take it to post-production. Something else I wanna mention, cause Matt just kind of brought this up. He said that his one photo looked a little bit too bright on his LCD screen, but his histograph looked fine and his settings were perfect. Don't always go off of your um, LCD screen. That's why you want to understand your exposure histograph and the ex uh, exposure metering mode because sometimes the LCD screen isn't going to be accurate and when you go into post-production, if you're going off of your LCD screen, you're just going to fuck yourself because your photo might look too bright and then you bring your settings down to make it darker and then when you go to post-production, it was actually proper and then you just ruined the photo and it's way too dark to even fix it now or something like that. So. Don't go off your LCD screen, go off your histograph and go off the exposure reading. Is it going? Yeah. Here, mate, yo, you come over? Okay, yeah. yo, so we've got our homie, Keem now, we've got our model. I dressed both these motherfuckers up because I got style. Whoa, whoa. Yeah, yeah, whoa. yeah. Whoa. Oh, shots fired, just Holy kidding. Shit. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Anyways, what we're gonna do is we're gonna get Matt to shoot Akeem. We're gonna try a couple different things to get you to just, you know, test out what you learned. And then take your job, right? And then, oh, shit. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Right? But I want you guys to go do the same thing. <laughs> go ask a friend. Go shoot some random shit in your house. Just try shooting some stuff and get some nice photos. <laughs>